Hey everyone, Paul SM. Welcome to another inbox review. Today we're going to have a quick look through the box of the Aoshima 124th Lamborghini Diablo GT. So this kit I've owned for a number of years. I'm going to say they're all in a minute, but I'm going to say it again anyway. I've owned this for a number of years, and it's a kit. It's probably my favourite Ferrari. I've always loved the Diablo. Controversially, never a huge fan of the uh, Countach. It never did anything for me. I never had it on the wall as a kid. I never saw the appeal of the Countach. I appreciate it for what it is now. I've built a nice 16-scale one. The Diablo that was the one that always caught my eye. Absolutely loved it, especially in the 30th anniversary mauve colour, mauve, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's always the one that caught me. If you're familiar with Jamaraquai's Cosmic Girl video, you'll know the exact car I'm talking about. Uh, it's just the one that always did it for me. So I bought this kit. It is a GT version. It's a different version of the car. Uh, and I had the colour in mind, which is going to be our post-scale Lamborghini purple, which you can get on our website now. It's going to look absolutely stunning. Um, and like I said, I wanted to build this kit for a while. It was one of the options to vote for build last time on the Patreon. Uh, we did the 250TR instead, and this one is going to be next. It was going to be a McLaren, but we're going to do this one instead. So we're going to have a quick look through the box, and we'll come back and have a bit of a chat about the build at the end. Right then, so we've got Aoshima's 124 scale Lamborghini Diablo GT. I've had this kit for a number of years now. I've been dying to build it, and I'm finally going to get round to doing it. So I thought I'd do the obligatory review, have a look through the box. It looks a lovely kit. I've seen several builds of this. No reported major issues with the kit, like some of the Lamborghinis, uh, namely the Aventadors, which I've had trouble with before. And I'm going to do this in my all-time favourite Lamborghini colours, which is the mauve, or mauve, wherever you want to say it, and it's a 30 purple. It's a special anniversary colour that was on some of the original 30th anniversary Diablos. Uh, not specifically a colour this car would have come in, but this is my favourite Lamborghini colour. I've mixed it for ourselves as a pro scale, and for me, it's a beautiful colour. So that's what we're using on this. Our paint is absolutely tiny pigments in there, absolutely minuscule metallic flakes. So this is going to look absolutely fabulous on this kit. You can get this from our website, www.proscalepaints.uk. As for the kit, we've got that lovely box art on the front. Yellow and orange would have been my second choices, probably orange if I'm honest. So a few differences over the standard Diablo. I don't know exactly what it is, but visually I think it's a different rear spoiler, different wheels. We've got some different aero and obviously the intake on the top as well. There'll be other differences I have no idea about at all. Uh, we've got some different profiles on the side of the box as well, showing the kit. The doors work, and I believe they're actually not too bad on the kit as well. It is an officially licensed product. It has the official Lamborghini hologram sticker there as well. Um, and yes, there we go. So let's see what we get in the box. There's quite a lot in here. So I'm not going to dilly-dally round. I'm just going to get through the kit. Quick. We've got the instructions. We've got clear parts, the wheels, chrome parts. There's a few sprues, like I say, the body shell is there, some more body panels, there, there, and there. We've got some masks and some decals there, tyres, pins, bumpers, and lights. Lots of bits and bobs. So we're going to whiz through this lot. I'm not going to be here all day looking at it, because you're going to see it built very soon, so I don't need to sit here all day. I'll have a little look what we get in the box. So the body shell. First of all, you'll notice these unbelievably fragile B pillars, which are here, thankfully still intact. So they're going to be very interesting to do. So just need some care there. Overall, though, the body shell looks pretty clean. There is a seam along the back, right along the leading edge, right up here as well. And then it runs down over the edge there. And then up along the front just there so not a lot of cleanup required really but it's a very very delicate body shell so some real care is going to be needed there we've got some side panels to go on the front and rear bumpers um, and a few other bodywear parts there so we need some real care with that um, yes so be very very careful when handling that you do not want to break it I'm going to grab some of the body panels first sorry for the rustling bags 
And the bags are heat sealed for once as well. No annoying staples. If we can get this out of here. So we've got our doors, side skirts, the side panels, the engine cover, and the wing mirrors are all there as well. And again, all cleanly molded in nice white plastic. Some very delicate doors here as well. You know, they're gonna need some care, but nothing really all that much interesting to look at here. Hopefully the doors fit fairly well. They don't need a lot of uh, persuasion to fit. Uh, wing mirrors, very iconic wing mirrors on this car as well. Lovely, but the plastic part, they look really good. Very crisp, crisply molded, no flash. Yeah, no problem at all with those. They look really, really nice. We've got a front bumper here as well, which I'm um, going to stab myself with the scalpel, which you do. So is that the front bumper? That looks like the front bumper to me. Again, not much to write home about. Nicely cleanly molded. As we can see there, beautiful. Um, we've got another insert for the front bumper there as well. It fits in there, but look at it. A lot of these parts are slide molded, which will give you cleaner uh, moldings and a little bit less clean up. It will require you to rustle the bags a lot more right next to the mic and glue a few more parts together. But the parts are really, really cleanly molded, as you can see. Very, very nice. So it shouldn't be any issue at all. Really good. Right, so let's have a look at some of these body interior panels. Just a sea of black plastic. So apologies for the bag rustlings. There's not much I can do about it. A lot of people will say, why don't you open them beforehand? I like to open them as a go, to be honest. Got the interior top, which has got some detail buttons in the middle there. Got the dashboard top. The bulkhead by the look of it. Steering wheel, the iconic Diablo steering wheel. Some suspension part here. All there as well. Steering column, auxiliary belts, engine cover surround on the back there as well. So very cool. On here we have the rear spoiler, which is there. Door cards, by part of the rear diffuser and a grill. So again, I guess not much to look at. It's just plain black plastic but it's all very cleanly molded very crisp very nice typical of most Aoshima kits another one here which has got a beautiful v12 engine in it there we go there's our floor pan so your typical flat floor pan with some chassis frame at the back there very cool drive shafts Engine covers, engine parts, headlights around, gear stick, handbrake, throttle, brake clutch, so on and so forth. There's a nice bit of detail on the cam covers, valve covers, whatever you want to call them. If I can get this to focus for you by tapping it, there we go. Very, very nice. So very, very cool there. And then over here, we've got the engine halves. Beautiful big V12. I can't remember, are these 6 litre, 7.2 or something? I forget what they are now. They're big though. Loads of engine parts, transmission parts as well. Very, very nice. And some exhaust parts at the top. So, quite crispy mold. Some nice detail there. Not bad at all. It's going to make a nice little engine there. Well, I say little. Big engine. In here we've got the inner wheel arches. They're in there. We've got some subframes. More suspension part here. At the top. Steering hubs. Intakes. Steering rack. They will be the pins for the wheels. There as well. And again, again, not much to look at. They're just purposeful part is what they are but they are very very cleanly molded really good there's no wisps of flash on there the cleanup doesn't look to be that bad so i don't think cleanup's going to be all too tough on that one actually looks fairly good so that's good let's get these bits out of here so we've got some chrome bits 
literally the rustliest bags in the world, aren't they? We've got the seats, again, stereotypical La Diablo. I'm not sure on interior colour yet, the rest of the dashboard is there. We've got some cooling fans there as well. That'll be the roof intake, I think it is. Giant window wiper, we've got another grill, a couple of grills here. Looks like the door mechanism in this bottom corner here. A few of the bits and bats, looking good. Chrome bits, we've got some lights. These must be real lights, I'm assuming. Very nicely chromed. And they look like mirrors. I think they're the mirrors. And again, quite nice chrome on those. Not too bad at all. We've got some other, not chromed, but I'm going to call them silvered parts, which have got the brake discs chromed exhaust tips which look very nice whether they can stay like that i don't know it depends how visible they are because the sprue points are just on the edge rather than being behind where any sane logical person will put them but the chrome is lovely it's a it's probably a touch thick but it's definitely usable so if i can use those they will be getting stripped that's for sure uh, these parts again they're not bad actually they're not bad for plated parts. They're a little bit too shiny, obviously, but you can dull them back if you really wanted. For me, they'll be stripped. This will all be stripped and repainted the colours I want. But they're nice. The detail's nice on them. They're cross-drilled. Again, I always wonder whether to drill these out. I've done it before, and I've regretted it. I thought they'd look better just with a wash in them. So, again, that's a personal choice for yourself. But they look good. They look really good. Wheels. I would have preferred the standard Diablo wheels. I am not going to lie. But these are still nice. These are a split rim. Now it calls for black on the centre part. I might keep these all silver. I don't know yet. I'm not sure on the wheels what I'm going to do, but they're nice. They are a nice wheel. Staggered as well. Very, very cool. Lovely. I do like those. Actually growing on me now. They do look quite good. And then you know what? They're actually a really nice colour. I don't even think they need painting. They're a perfect colour. They're actually really nice. I might keep those as they are. Tyres. We get to the clear... Actually, we'll do the clear parts now. We'll get all the sprues out of the way. As I always say, the clear parts are what make or break a kit quite often they break it so we've got a few glass parts here we've got some quarter panel lights we've got rear lenses headlight lenses the front screen side windows and the glass is actually really good if i just show you quickly it's actually really good quality very very nice we've got a dashboard there as well i'm not sure what's going on with that it's a bit odd yeah have a look at that i'm not sure why it's all clear I assume it's to um, imitate the glass, but we don't want the whole thing glass, do we? That rear panel between the engine bay and the uh, cabin. Very cool. Oh, my echo piping up. Don't know why. So very cool. And then the main glass itself. And again, the front windscreen. Very, very good. Very nice and clear. Quarter panel. Glass good, the headlights are good. There's a little bits and bobs. Very, very nice glass. Quite impressed by that. So nice to get some good glass for once. In we go without wrecking everything. There we are. Let's get some of these bags out of the way. And then we've got plastic sprues of clear parts in red and orange. So these would be for the lights. Always a nice addition, these. There we go, so no painting of these, they're already on there and done. So really good, so there's the reds, there's the ambers, the old instigators. So again, very good, nice touch to get in the kit. Tires, have we got branded tires? I'm pretty sure Ashima usually has branded tires. Nope. All they've got is a tire size on them. 
a little bit disappointing, but never mind. It is what it is. It's one of those. Treads nice on them. Really nice. No seam on there. So they can go straight on. No problem at all. So the rears, they're the fronts. It's a shame they've got the tyre sizes. I know Brandon. It really is. But never mind. It is what it is, isn't it? It's one of them, sadly. But yeah, nice. All the same. Poly caps there as well. Let's just pop these back in the bag. Like so. We've got the four poly caps for the wheels that are there. And then we've got the what be the sprung hinge mechanism, I'm thinking, for the doors. And I think actually they might be for the uh, the engine cover as well to hold it open. These things, I'm pretty sure they are actually they're for the engine cover. We'll see in a bit anyway. But yeah, there we go. So no problems there with those bits. Last few bits, we've got some decals and a mass set. Helps if I cut the bag, doesn't it? There we go. So we've got a mass set for the glass, which is always a welcome addition. Always. So very good. They'll be very, very useful. So thank you for those. And then we've got decals. Now, I'm pretty sure I've got some nice Lamborghini decals myself. So any of these badges, like the actual Lamborghini logo badge, will be replaced. Everything else looks really good. Nice, clear, crisp decals. Got some Brembo logos for the uh, the brakes. Warning labels for the engine bay, the Diablo, Diablo GT badges, the Lamborghini badges, all the instruments. Very, very cool. So the decals look really, really good. Very, very nice. And then last but not least, there's bags everywhere. It's like a bag massacre, this. What is going on? We've got the instructions on the front. We've got important notes. You have to read them, should you wish. Yeah, it's basically like don't jump off the roof while you're painting or gargle bloody super glue. Just all the basic stuff. On the inside page, we've got more modeling malarkey, how to use the window masks, using the decals. Paint call out to there. There's literally like two for seven paints called out. All the legends are here for the instructions themselves as well. So fairly self-explanatory. And we've got a side profile up in front and rear for all your decals and badges and what have you. Very good. And then we're starting assembly. So, first off, we've got an odd... Ah, we've got a chassis um, display base mount. That's quite good. If you want to mount or something, you can put that bracket in. Fair play. Starting off with our steering assembly with the brakes and the steering rod, inner wheel arches, suspension, then we're onto the engine. Building all this up, very, very impressive. That scoops for the engine. Yeah, it goes on the back. Be carbon that, I think, as well. Big, big lump of an engine there. Onto the rear brakes, rear subframes and suspension, rear inner arches, exhaust system. Then we're onto the cockpit itself, which again, looks absolutely uh, really simplistic and nice. What we're gonna do with the interior yet? Yeah, I have no idea, we'll figure that out as we go. The bulkhead with the rear engine bay cover and glass. And silly components, getting the wheels in place with the poly caps. Paying attention to which side your tyres go, which direction they go. Getting the wheels in place, getting the engine cover in place, roof lining in place, cutting the support off, which, funny enough, is where Alan came from. Where have you gone, Alan? Alan's buggered off somewhere. There he is. There's Alan. There's my bench mascot. He was the support off my... Uh, Ferrari 288 GTO, I think it was. Hang on, his, uh, his penis has moved a bit. There we go. Alan, he's got a Scouser wig. He's flipping the bird on both hands and he's rocking out with his thing out. Yeah, so that is one of those. So one of these, we'll have another one, I think. We'll call him ooh, Jeff. He can be Jeff. So yeah, a bit random there, I know. But hey-ho, that's me all over. Rear spoiler. Rear lights, front screening goes over the top at the front with the wipers, got the headlights going in. These side skirts, this is where we'll start. This is where we're going to start from. This will be left off because we're going to carbon that. This will be glued in place. Front bumpers will be assembled as well, and it can always be glued in place in preparation for paint. Uh, we've got the rear, 
which I don't know if that's painted or not, I can't quite see. Uh, the doors and all their separate assembly. Obviously, we'll test for all the doors to make sure they bloody fit. Because if you built one of these Aventador's from Aoshima, you'll know they're a bit poo. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Aventador at all. I think it's overrated. Um, but I believe this one's a lot better. The door mechanism goes in there. And then get the chassis and body mated. There's those supports there for the um, engine cover. Where are the other two then? Where do those other two buggers go? Let's have a look for them quickly before we end the review. Where are you? Where have you gone? Apparently you're nowhere, but there's definitely two more, wasn't there? There was four. So where did the other two go? What is going on there? Where are they? If I've missed that, shout out in the instructions. Uh, in the instructions. If I've missed that in the instructions, shout out in the chat. Because I can't see where they go so there's those ah okay so we've got these for the the boot lid and the other ones are for the doors okay so for the, keeping the door open on the Aventador, door i think it's like sprung with some horrendous metal contraption and it doesn't really work well at all but on this it should do and then on the back we've got all the parts out there's quite a lot of parts, but I think the assembly looks pretty simple. Uh, and all these spare parts down there, if you ruin something, can have to get it. But there we go. There's Aoshima's Lamborghini Diablo GT. There we go. That looks a really nice kit. It really does. It looks quite simple. It doesn't look like it would be a challenge, really. It shouldn't be too difficult at all. I certainly hope it's not going to be. Um, and hopefully we can get this beautiful colour down. Get some nice carbon accents on there. I got a lovely 2K job on it, and then it with a really pretty Diablo. That's the plan. Wheel colour, I am really tempted to leave them the plate of colour that comes in the kit, because that just looks great. Just looks absolutely fantastic. Needs a light wash. That's about it, really. Um, so that's probably the plan on that. Interior colour, I'm not sure. I'm really not. Uh, the exterior, we're going for the Dirty Purple. I think it's nicknamed Dirty Purple, isn't it? But it's the 30th anniversary. Um, 30 Purple, it's called. Um, with some carbon accents, I think. Um, and I'm looking forward to this one. It's one of my favourite Lambos in my favourite colour of all time. I don't think this car officially came in that colour, but I don't really care. It's just one of those. I've got to do it in this colour, and this is probably one of the better Diablo kits out there. So there we go. You're going to see this next. It was a toss up between this and the MP4 12 in the Red Bull scheme. I'll probably do that one after this, I think, because, again, beautiful kit of a wonderful car in a nice scheme as well. So I'm going to do this. So make sure you check out ProScale, www.proscale.uk. There's a link in the description down below. We've got over 100 paints on our site now of all different colours, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and we'll colour mi color mix to order at no extra cost. We post all around the world. Uh, we try and get orders out the same day that they come in. And uh, we've got really fast turnaround. And the paints have just proven themselves. Go back and look through my videos. Uh, look at the Ferrari 250TR. Look at the BMWs I've done recently. The paint and the 2K speaks for itself. It's beautiful. It really is absolutely fantastic. Um, and that's it. There we are. So, as I said in my last videos, um, I'd like to thank all my patrons for your continued support. Right now, you should see all your names scrolling across the screen. Uh, it's literally going over my face because it's the only way I can see it doing it properly. So don't worry about me. Um, thank you all for your continued support. You're absolute legends. Uh, if you want to become a patron, there's a link down below. You can click on it. Click the applicable tier for yourself. There's all different price points. They give you certain uh, perks for picking a certain price point. Um, but you get early access on videos up to a month. You get exclusive video builds, exclusive reviews, how-to guides. Uh, you get added to an exclusive Facebook group, an exclusive Facebook Messenger chat group. Um, and you keep me going in these videos. Without your support, I couldn't do these. So the links for that's down below. And there's a Buy Me Coffee or PayPal Me link should you wish to donate uh, a one-off maybe. And there's links to everything else down there for my SM Facebook page and forum. Pro for Scale Paint is down there. UMP Retail is down there. You've got links to all the live show, the off-air hangout groups, my Paul SM modeling page on Facebook. My Etsy store, I sell all my built models, is there. 
You've got uh, links to all the products I use in my videos on the forum and my Amazon store. There's an email address to get in touch with me. There's my Scalemates links is in there as well. So you can go look at my stash. And of course, make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click that bell notification to get notified of all the latest videos, and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. This is going to get started probably tomorrow morning. The first video will be on Patreon, and it'll probably come on ISM in about five weeks, I think it is. There's about 10 videos on early release on Patreon so far, and I've released two a week to ISM. They go up straight away on ISM, on um, Patreon, and they go up on about well, five weeks later on ISM. So there we go, another review, another great kit to start, and another very interesting paint colour to do as well. Looking forward to this one, and uh, hopefully uh, a few of you will watch it and give me some feedback on what you think. There we go. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.